Uh, let's talk about uh, some of uh, DBS's uh, activity overseas, especially in China. Re uh, just uh, about at the end of last year, you announced that you were increasing your stake in Shanghai Rural Development Bank. Shenzhen Rural. Shenzhen Rural, Rural Development Bank, that is. Uh, and, you know, it's coming at a time when there's a lot of questions and uncertainties about the financial health of lenders, of property developers in China and the overall economy as well. Um, what gave you the confidence to increase your stake in Shenzhen Rural Development Bank? What kind of exposure might they have to some of these riskier parts of the Chinese economy? And do you think uh, this, uh, is, there, is there anything else that people should be worried about with regards to the, the, the overall health and the trajectory of this, of this big economy just north of us? So there are two questions. One is the economy and what is your macroeconomic outlook? And uh, you know, for us at DBS, we take the long view. Um, we don't make investments based on what's going to happen over the next four quarters or the next couple of years because, you know, we're here to stay and so we look through, through cycle. And our view on the Chinese economy when you look long term and through cycle is constructive. Uh, it's an $18 trillion economy. Even if it grows at 4 or 5%, that's, you know, uh, almost a billion, a trillion dollars of growth every year. And there's some sectors of the economy where they're really gaining position. The EV sector, the lithium sector, the renewable sector, the large parts of the economy where the country continues to do well. So we're betting on the long-term possibilities around China, not the short term. Within that, we're also betting on the Greater Bay Area. We think that that together is the sixth largest uh, GDP in the world, the Greater Bay Area. And we think that's a really good place in which we can build a business and play it. Uh, leverages our strength in Hong Kong. We can anchor on our Hong Kong capabilities to build a business over there. So that's one. On the more micro thing, the Shenzhen Rural Commercial Bank is a very um, unusual bank. Uh, one, it's in the city of Shenzhen, and there's nothing rural about Shenzhen, so it's a city bank. Second, it does not participate in any of the large real estate developers, local government, all of the areas where we know the economy is fragile. The Shenzhen Rural Commercial Bank doesn't do any of that stuff. Uh, it is a private bank. Uh, we have positions on the board. And so we're quite closely integrated with the management process. We know what's going on with the bank. It's highly capitalized. Uh, its capital issues are good. Its return on equity is good. And we're quite comfortable with the underlying credit portfolio. So for us, this is a good opportunity to build a position and a platform that we can leverage and use to expand into the greater Bay Area in years to come. Uh, just remind me again, uh, Mr. Gupta, outside of the Shenzhen Rural Development Bank, what is DBS's overall exposure in China, particularly in the property sector, where a lot of these question marks originated with regards to the Chinese economy? Yeah, I, I, you know, the bulk of our activities in China tend to be what we call China outbound. So they support Chinese companies, but not in the mainland. We're less relevant in the mainland. Uh, so the bulk of our exposures and our business is Chinese companies in Hong Kong, Singapore, Southeast Asia, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, our total exposure to all Chinese real estate companies, including Singapore and Hong Kong companies operating in China, if you will, we were previously guided as about 14 billion Sing dollars, so call it 10 billion. Uh, but the bulk of that is actually activity not in China. It's outside China. And also a large part of that is to foreign companies, not Chinese companies, uh, maybe five, six billion, or to state-owned enterprises which are very solid and robust.